the Retro Flag Game Boy upgrade got an upgrade? Let's talk about that. Hello and welcome to Modern Broadcast. How about that snazzy new intro? Some of you might remember that I posted a video about the Retro Flag G Pike case getting an upgrade with the Zero 02. Well, about a week after I posted that video, they came out with an even bigger upgrade. Now let's talk about some retro handheld gaming. This is the G Pike case 2 by Retro Flag. Retro Flag is a manufacturing company dedicated to building nostalgic cases for the Raspberry Pi single board computer family. The GPI case has a premium plastic shell like its predecessor, great build quality, and a great weight to the product. The GPI case 2 has a 3 inch 640 by 480 pixel LCD screen, stereo earphone support, a built in 4000 milliamp battery, and even a dock to play your games on the TV. But more on that in a moment. So you'll see here we have the deluxe edition. There are two editions, one that has the dock included and one that does not. Uh, so mine here has the dock included so we can hook up to the TV and play our retro games on the big screen. So for the base model without the dock is $79.99 where the one with the dock is $89.99. For that extra $10, I definitely think it's worth getting the Deluxe Edition. So you might be asking yourself, is it worth the upgrade just to be able to play your retro games on the TV? Well, this one is compatible with the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, which is basically a heavily modified Raspberry Pi 4, which has significantly more power than the Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero 2. All right, taking a look at the device first, um, as we can see, that screen is bigger uh, compared to the old model. It is a 3.0 um, screen. We have our D-pad, A, B, X, Y buttons, same as the predecessor model. Uh, down here at the bottom, we have our start and select. And then we also have a retro flag button here um, and also a turbo button. So the way to set that up is hold the turbo and push a button and let go. And then uh, that turbo will be activated. On the side of the device here, we have our contrast slider, which is actually just brightness up or down. On the other side, we have our volume wheel. Moving on to the bottom of the device, we have our Type-C charger and a headphone jack. Up top, we have our power button and a sleep function button. On the back, we have the same left and right buttons, which I am not a fan of for the device, but one great addition is there's no more AA batteries. There's that 4,000 hour milliamp battery uh, inside and that's charged with the type C charging cable. Let's go ahead and take a look at the dock now. As you can see here, uh, there's like a springboard with a type C connector. When you push down, it will charge and uh, connect the dock. Nothing on the side here or on the side. On the bottom, there's this rubber pad which has a film on it right now. If you take that off, uh, it's a little bit more uh, sticky. So in the back we have two USB 2.0 ports, a Type-C charger, and a HDMI out port. Connecting the system to the dock is real easy. Just uh, line up the Type-C port on the bottom and push down, and it's already connected. Let's go to our computer and set up the software. All right, first thing that we're gonna wanna do is go to the Raspberry Pi OS, um, cause what we're going to need is the Raspberry Pi Imager software. Um, so we're on Windows, so let's go ahead and download for Windows. They also have available for Mac and Linux. And what I'm gonna do 
I'm just going to take this imager file and just set it right on my desktop. Go ahead and open this up. It's going to ask to do an install. We're going to say yes. Should be pretty quick and then run the imager. So let's go ahead. Now, operating system. We're going to choose our OS. We are using this for emulation and game OS. And you could choose between Recall Box or RetroPie. I'm going to do RetroPie just because I'm more familiar um, with the interface. Go ahead and click on that. And then the newest one we have is the RetroPie 4.7.1. But we need to make sure that we're downloading for the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, so you see this first one is for Raspberry Pi 1 or 0. And then it's for the 2 or 3. And lastly down here at the bottom is for the 4. So go ahead and click on that. The storage device that we're going to run right to is our 32 gigabyte card. So go ahead and click that. Uh, you may have other ones um, listed and you have other USBs plugged in or other uh, SD cards or micro SD cards. So just make sure that you're choosing the correct one. Um, and then we're just going to click right. So it's going to say that it's going to format the disk essentially. And uh, do you want to continue? Yes. This process does take a moment. So while this is uh, installing on the micro SD card, Let's go ahead and head on over to uh, Retroflag's GitHub. All right, so here we are on the Retroflag GitHub page. Uh, links for both the Imager and um, Retroflag's GitHub here will be in the description down below. But we need to click on the GPI Case 2 script. Then we need to... Um, before installing the script, we need to make sure that the patch is installed. So that's the first thing that we need to do. Um, click the link to download the patch. We have that. I'm going to just drag this and drop it on my desktop as well. All right, so now that that's done, um, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to unplug our micro SD card and then re-plug it back in. So you're more than likely going to get a pop-up that says you need to format the disk drive um, before it can be used. And then it has highlights, it highlights format disk. What we wanna do is hit cancel on that. If you format it, then you just got rid of everything we just did. Um, but we need to open up our folder here and find the boot drive. Uh, so it looks like mine didn't auto populate. I'm going to hit refresh and there it is. So you need to find the one that says boot. For me, it's drive K. So we're going to open up that. And then we're going to open up our patch file here. And there is a readme text in here that basically says for Windows install display patch uh, for GPI case, copy GPI case patch for whatever system we're using, so Botticera, Recall Box, um, or RetroPie, onto the SD card root. So we're gonna copy the whole folder over to the boot drive, enter in that folder, and click the install underscore batch dot bat file. Once the patch is done, we'll have to go back to the RetroFlag GitHub page to download some additional files to put on the SD card. So let's drag all this over the RetroPie because that's what we installed. Gonna open up this and we're going to click install patch.bat. So a Windows command uh, window will pop up. To say these files were copied and successful configuration. Press any key to continue. There we are. All right, now that we got the patch installed, we're gonna go back to the GitHub page and we're gonna click on go to file. So here's the list of the files that are in there. Um, as you can see, you can install Botticera, Recallbox, or RetroPie. So since I'm using RetroPie, I'm gonna right click on this, click save link as. 
I'm just going to put this on my desktop. All these files here that say RetroPie, I'm going to save link as. I'm going to save to the desktop. Alright, so now we're ready to install um, those other files that we downloaded from GitHub. So, put those on the desktop. Let's drag those over. So here's all those um, system files that we downloaded. I'm going to drag over and drop. There they all are. We can now unplug our micro SD card and put it in the system. So let's go ahead and go over and do that now. All right, here we are uh, back with the GPI 2. So we're gonna remove the cartridge and we'll see here inside on the side here is where our micro SD card will go. Um, there's a little hinge here that you push up and to lock it, you slide it up. So on this side is where the CM4 device will go. And there's a rail down at the bottom you have to line up and also the top that lines up and you push it into place. It kind of just locks in place like that. So Retroflag does give you a diagram here uh, to kind of help you install this correctly. Um, as you can see, the design pattern on the back um, matches up with the CM4. So basically flip the board upside down and then there you go that lines up so that's the way you'll install the cm4 with those rails on the back here so installing the cm4 is very simple you basically just slide it in um the back here try to get it lined up and then you push on top careful not to push on the screen on the other side with uh, like your index finger and then it's a bit of a squeeze but you have to get your fingers down there and push down until you hear that click um, earlier when I was messing with this uh, I did not get it all the way and the device would not boot but as you can see you can shake it, it doesn't fall out it's very secure um, and actually getting it out after installing is kind of difficult. So here we have our micro SD card. And what you want to do is line it up with the notches in this corner here. This might take a few tries uh, trying to get it lined up perfectly, uh, but eventually it does settle and um, you can kind of test it that it doesn't really wiggle around anymore. A complaint that I kind of have about this device is um, they don't give you much finger space uh, as the metal door latch goes down below, but my finger can't grab it. So I hold the SD card and I kind of flip the device on its back to get the door upwards and then just kind of jiggle it so that way the latch kind of starts to close press down the latch and slide it upwards lock it in place and now that sd card will not go anywhere perfect let's go ahead and put our back cover back on and do some uh gameplay footage real quick i just want to note um that i accidentally deleted uh, the footage of the first boot up. So, and then I did a bunch of testing to make it customized for me. Um, so if you wanna see a video on how to set up RetroPie um, and customize it, let me know in the comments down below. Also, just to note that uh, the first time you boot up, it will take probably about two minutes um, for the screen to actually turn on, so don't panic uh, as it, it will turn on. So we're going to start out with Game Boy Advance, uh, some Pokemon, and then we'll move on to Dreamcast, Nintendo 64, PlayStation. Um, 
and we'll call it there as the Dreamcast and the Nintendo 64 will really put the system through its paces. So real quick, I just want to show the functionality of the turbo button. To initiate it, you hold turbo, and then you push the A button, or whatever button that you want to be turbo. Now we can just hold A, and it's just going to keep spamming A really, really fast. To disengage the turbo, uh, you're going to again hold that turbo button and push A again. Now, we're back to pushing A manually and not holding it. So the GPI-2 case comes with a sleep function. This button up here, so if we tap this, it'll just put the game to sleep and pause right where we're at. So we can set it down, we can go do something and uh as soon as you know we're done with whatever we're we're working on we can come back push it again and pick up right where we left off very handy moving on over to playstation uh we're gonna be playing some brave fencer musashi uh i remember as a kid I, I played this a lot i kept going to um the local video store and renting it uh i've probably bought this game like three times over with how much I rented it and played it. But uh, you'll see here uh, during the gameplay, I did really bad um, for looking through a little monitor uh, as I was playing. So <laughs> it was not good at all, but uh, definitely worth trying if you have not played this game before. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough of that. <laughs> to quit any game, um, you're just going to push start and select at the same time, and that will bring you back here to the main menu. So next up, we have Dreamcast, uh, and I have Sonic Adventure Battle 2. We'll notice here on the GPI Case 2 that the D-pad does not work. Um, the other buttons were working just fine, but... The GPI uh, Case 2 doesn't have enough buttons, actually, for Dreamcast. So, to kind of work around this, if you're playing in handheld mode, is to um, hold Select and push Y. Oh, I'm sorry, X. And then we're going to scroll down, or push B. Scroll down to Settings. Then go to Input. And go to port one bindings or binds. Scroll down until we see the left analog. And we're just going to configure this to the D pad. We'll push back, back again, and we'll just resume. So now you'll see we can actually control Sonic, move around. It does feel a little bit weird. I mean, it's running at full speed, but it feels a little weird because, you know, it's supposed to be an analog stick, and instead we're using um, directional buttons. So it's not that precise, but it gets the job done in handheld mode. Lastly, we have Nintendo 64, and again, um, we're met with that same thing with the Dreamcast, is there's just not enough buttons on this device to really enjoy 64 in handheld mode. Um, we can plug this into the dock and connect a Bluetooth controller, which will give us full functionality and be able to play without any problems. Nintendo 64 does run fairly well on this device. There's an occasional audio blip here and there, um, but in my testing, it worked really well.
So here we are just demonstrating that uh, the D-pad doesn't work. You could do what we did for the Dreamcast, but again, it probably just wouldn't feel that great to do. The one thing that I'll say is kind of a bummer about this device is that when you're playing in handheld mode and you put it on the dock, it doesn't automatically switch to the HDMI out port. Um, in order to do so, you have to restart the device. And for me, that kind of kills it a little bit. As uh, you know, I've kind of gotten spoiled with the Nintendo Switch where you just pick it up and you're in handheld mode. You put it back down and you're playing on TV no interruption. Um, I suppose it's not that big of a deal, but it is something to note uh, that I think others would find kind of important. Real quick, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you all for watching. We just hit 100 subscribers, and I'm so excited and grateful for each and every one of you. I started this adventure a little more than a month ago, and I told myself that I would post a video at least once a week and share my love of video games and handheld devices. I certainly hope that you stay tuned as we continue onwards exploring the vast world of video games together. What are your thoughts on Retroflag's GPI Case 2? Is it worth the upgrade for you? Come join our Discord. A link will be down in the description below. If you like this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. Have a good week, everyone. Take care.